Hey, it's Les from the TV Dudes. This week, I was lucky enough to talk with Olivia Macklin, who currently can be seen playing Nicole on the Fox sitcom L.A. to Vegas. We talked about auditioning for the sitcom, her theater roots, the hopes for a musical episode, and much more. Hope you enjoy. This is Les. Hey, Les. It's Olivia Macklin. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Thank you so much for taking the time to do the interview today. I really appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. I'm I'm super excited. I'm speaking with Olivia Macklin, who plays Nicole on uh, Fox News sitcom L.A. to Vegas, which I think just got picked up for a few more episodes, did it not? Yeah, we um, we got three additional episodes uh, that we filmed already. So now we're just uh, watching them air, and you know, hope that people keep tuning in. Well, it's been great so far. I think the I think the next one up is Bernard's birthday. I, I spoke with Nathan Lee Graham <laughs> yesterday. Oh really? Yeah, it's um, it's one of our one of our best. We had so much fun uh, filming that one, and um, Amy Landecker, who uh, plays my mom, and that's the first episode she's in. So it was really fun to shoot. That's great. Can you talk a bit about yeah. the character of Nicole? Of course. Um, so Nicole is a young college student living in L.A. who on the weekends goes to Vegas and makes some money stripping. Uh, she keeps it a secret from her family, but everybody on the flight knows. And uh, Nicole is really interesting because she's not like any other TV stripper, movie stripper ever. She's very, you know, savvy and street smart and, and quick witted and is kind of like the has developed into the mama bear of the group. She's uh, very protective of the people in her life and, and very smart and level headed and really, really fun. I love playing Nicole. Yeah, I think one of Bernard's lines in the in the show is we're all gonna end up working for her someday, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> that was last week and yeah. I think that sums up Nicole pretty concisely. Do I have it right that uh, you studied theater at Fordham? In college, I did. I did. Yes, I. Um, I grew up in Chicago, and I. I knew I wanted to go to college in New York and study theater. And um, Fordham. Fordham was the place. I was in New York for six years, and I, I moved out here for the show. I had seen something online that you had done a at least a reading of a play, Mary in the Club. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm actually. <laughs> Um, I'm a part of a really great theater company in New York. I was actually with one of the um, the founders of the theater company last night. It's called Less Than Rent, and um, they've been doing amazing work since before I moved to New York. It's mostly people who uh, went to Fordham before my time. Uh, and Mary in the Club was the last thing I did with them before I moved out to L.A. It's a, a great show. I hope that gets to um, be seen on a on a larger scale. Now. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the the setup of of that play or that show is a uh, is kind of a country mouse city mouse. Yeah. But but moves in and kind yeah. of takes over the city mouse's life or. or... Yeah, it's um it, it's written by my good friend James Presson, and it is about um a oh my god no I'm I'm like basically a, a Quaker uh, girl Mennonites. who. Uh, yeah, a Mennonite. Wow, oh, gosh, it's it feels like forever since I've done it. A Mennonite who. Uh, goes to New York to find her sister who ran away from that whole culture years before. And yeah, kind of gets sucked into the dark, gritty, like modeling club scene of New York. And it's very James. I mean, I've, I've read so many of his plays over the past couple of years and he really, he can tell such dark stories in such a beautiful way. And they're, they're all just really like intoxicating and, and juicy and fun. And I, I love working with him. <laughs> So what was it like to move then out to L.A. for the show? Can you talk a bit about auditioning or the casting process for L.A. to Vegas? Yeah. Um, so I uh, signed with my manager my junior year of college um, with the promise that I would graduate early. I don't think he was too excited when he found out I was still in school. He had seen me in another great play called Horse Girls by Jenny Rachel Liner. Um, that was so much fun. And uh, I had been auditioning for about 
two and a half, almost three years. And so it was kind of like my, you know, your first pilot, I kind of signed with him right at pilot season. So that one kind of didn't count. And then the one after that was like my first official one. And this is the one where we were like, okay, now's the time. People know me. Let's get something big. And um, I had tested for another really great uh, Fox pilot that was written by Liz Merriweather. Um, and I had auditioned for that with Clint Alexander, who is one of the best casting directors I've ever met and one of the coolest people. And I think after after that, he, they kind of kept me on their radar. So when LA to Vegas came up, I think I, I kind of floated to the top of the pile. And um, I loved Nicole and I loved the the script. And it seemed like a really great group of people working on it with, you know, Will Ferrell and Gary Sanchez. And um, then, yeah, I auditioned. And about two weeks later, found out I was testing, tested for it once. And, and then I was Nicole. It was kind of, it felt really easy, like it was meant to be. Did the depth of Nicole jump out at you from the start or, or were you kind of surprised as the show went on kind of how sharp her character is? <laughs> yeah, a little bit of both. I think when I looked at it, because the first thing it said was like, you know, hot, sexy stripper. And I don't think that that's my type per se. I don't think I, I, I don't think that I'm like, Oh yeah, like totally. I'm going to be like the hot, whatever. So I thought, okay, well, how do I make this mine? And if you read it, if you read the pilot, it, the fact that she's a stripper is so secondary to who she is. She's, she's funny. I mean, you, it, she's a comedian in her own right. And so I just focused on kind of making her as kind of funny and real and kind of sassy and brassy as I could. And I think they liked that and, and then started to write the character in that direction. So she went from being a little more ditzy, I think in the beginning, which was still great. And she was still really, you know, well represented to then being a little bit more of the, um, the no nonsense chick that she is. Yeah. I feel like that this character could very easily be just, just Pollyanna and just optimistic about everything and, and incredibly naive. Yeah. And, and she's not naive. She very much understands no. the world and, and just, but cheerfully accepts it. But like, Oh no, there's plenty of horrible stuff out there. Like the, the way to dress about kidnapping, yeah. like just the, the blithe <laughs> way that she says. I know, she's really like uh, not afraid of anything. And, and exactly like lives kind of the most ridiculous life ever, but it's so level headed about it. I mean, it makes me kind of, check myself because I fly off the handle way quicker than Nicole ever would. And my life is not nearly as insane. So it's, it's nice to play someone like that for sure. Do you have anything that's been kind of hinted at so far that you'd like to see explored as, as far as the crazier stuff that gets dropped about your character's background? Oh yeah. 100%. I mean, you hear her tell so many stories, but you don't actually see them happen. And I would love an episode that kind of strays from like, I think each character on the show is so unique and could get honestly like their own episode, like solely theirs where you explore their life outside of the plane, outside of the terminal. And I think to kind of see what Nicole is actually like um, on the day to day, or maybe see one of these ridiculous things where she like flies to Hong Kong and, you know, is kidnapped or held hostage or is doing the kidnapping and the, the, ho the hostage holding. I don't know how you would say that. I think that would be really fun to see. Um, and I'm excited to see where the character goes. You know, I think that she is going to take over. I really do. I think that she will buy out the strip club, you know, down the road or buy the airline. Geez, I feel like she could do anything she wants. So what first got you into acting? Um, did, were you in high school theater before? Did you always have the bug? Yeah, I always had the bug. I mean, you know, you hear a lot of people tell their, their story. I went and I saw this play and I, I knew in that moment, but I don't think I ever had a moment that honestly, it feels like it was sort of just always meant to be nothing like there wasn't a switch that needed to be turned on. It was already turned on. I mean, I'm sure, uh, you know, watching movies as a kid, I mentioned it to my parents and then got encouragement, but I just, I've never wanted to do anything else. So I started doing theater very, very young. I mean, elementary, middle school, I was going to other towns and doing plays where I could and did it in high school and just kept going. I, there was never a plan B. Was there an actor or actress that, that you, really admired as a kid or, or aspired to be? Oh my gosh, so many. I, and I think every day I look to a new person who inspires me or go back to someone kind of use whatever I need whenever I need it. Like obviously right now I'm, I'm uh, drawn to uh, female comedians and, and classic funny ladies. 
Shirley MacLaine is someone who I've always loved and admired. I think that she is capable of such high comedy and high drama and even at the same time. So I've been watching a lot of her films and, and Lucille Ball and Mary Tyler Moore, uh, as well as the classics like uh, Jessica Lange and, and Susan Sarandon and Kate Blanchett. I, I admire so many women. I don't think I could pin it down to just one. Has it been interesting going from like stage theater to you know a, a production like HBO's Young Pope to yeah. you know a, a sitcom like LA to Vegas? Uh, mm. Is it is it different getting into your character, getting getting into that place? Oh, absolutely. I mean, theater and, you know, versus film and television is so vastly different. You're given a a shorter period of time that's very, um, I mean, it's 24-7. You're rehearsing constantly. You can be kind of in the mindset of that character, you know, 24 hours a day because the the time period is so short. Um, Whereas with the show, you know, we've been filming for several months and and taking breaks and you have to find it again. You have to find it every day uh, in a different way. But, um, you know, before The Young Pope, I really hadn't been on a set. I didn't know what I was doing. And on top of it, The Young Pope, most of the people working on that production were in were Italian. So most people were speaking to me in Italian. So it was very hard to get a grasp of what was happening around me. I was just trying to pick up cues based on what I was seeing. And so even still with LA to Vegas, like I'm I'm asking a lot of questions on set just about the the process in general, because I don't think that it's an actor's medium uh, so much as theater is. You know, I feel like the actor really drives the ship forward, whereas there are so many moving parts in film and television that you have to be aware of all of the other people who are trying to do their job around you. And so it's not just about my performance. It's about um, being a a cog in this well-oiled machine and making sure that the job gets done. Uh, But I I really like that. I feel like it's a really collaborative space and it's gotten me really interested in just the film world in general. I'd love to direct one day or or produce. And um, we've had a lot of great directors and producers on the show who have been very uh, generous with uh, bestowing knowledge and, and wisdom. Do you have a particular uh, dream role or, or dream part <laughs> that you'd like to do in I mean, film or television? Yeah. Um, right now, I'd love to be on one of the amazing television shows that's uh, you know, female centric and driven by women like Big Little Lies or Handmaid's Tale. I watched both of those and it it was absolutely mind blowing. I think Handmaid's Tale is some of I mean, some of the best content that has ever been and some of the greatest female performances. I, I think I would I would give a limb to do a scene with Elizabeth Moss. So if I could get on, on Handmaid's Tale right now, especially given the fact that it's so vastly different from what I'm doing on L.A. to Vegas, because comedy um, really wasn't the expectation. It's, you know, it's hard to get into comedy and you have a lot of people kind of saying, oh, don't even try. And so drama always kind of felt like the, the next logical step. And now here I am doing comedy. I would love to show that I can do some heavy, hard hitting drama, too. Well, your timing on the show uh, is absolutely perfect. Thank you. Especially on a show, I feel like that is so tightly written, and the ensemble cast really has to be, you know, catching each other's lines mm-hmm. at the right moment uh, to keep the jokes yeah. going. Is there anything in particular that y'all did to uh, to foster that camaraderie? We are honestly, I hate to say it sounds so cheesy, like we are a family. I mean, we get together every Tuesday night and watch the episode together. And they've become some of my closest friends. Uh, when I moved here, most of them had already been here for a while. And I I didn't know a lot of people. And they took me under their wing and, and have been so sweet and, and great. And we're just a really good group. I think we all admire the work that each other is doing on the show. And we all know that the you know, the success of the show comes from these interactions between our characters. You know, when, when Ed's character, Colin and I interact, it's like two of the unlikeliest friends in the world. You know, we, we want it to be special. So I think we all, we're all just on the same wavelength and, um, you know, we, we love each other's jokes there. Nathan always texts me after he reads the script saying like this joke, I could hear you saying in my head and, and vice versa. And so we, we get each other. We get each other's characters. So it feels really natural when we when we finally get on set. You know, I know I know that it's gonna go smoothly. I I already tried to put the bug in Nathan's ear yesterday, uh, but <laughs> I would love to see a musical number 
on the show. Oh. Just partly because I know he, I know he can sing, but the the plane itself just oh, lends yeah. itself so easily to a, a runway stage. We, that's so funny you say that, right? Kim and Ed and I were all just together watching the episode, and then I think for about two hours after, just had like a a musical theater jam session um, because we're just super cool. But we were all saying like we would love to have a, a musical episode, so. Spread the word. We want it. All right. Well, fingers crossed we'll get that next season and uh, and see a musical <laughs> number you. in it. Yeah, absolutely. Nathan would be the star of that episode, undeniable, <laughs> but we would all provide some solid background, I think. It's been so great talking to you. I really, I, I'm enjoying the show and I, I can't thank you enough for taking out the time to do the interview. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for watching too. I really appreciate it. Well, hopefully you get a season two and have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Thank you so much. You too. Bye. Bye. The TV Dudes is an independently run podcast and a member of the Permanent Record Podcast Network. We are exclusively listener supported. If you'd like to help us out, please go to patreon.com slash TV Dudes. You can like us on Facebook and Twitter at TV Dudes and help us out on iTunes by giving us a five star rating and writing a review. To find out more about us, go to the TV Dudes.com and permanentrcrd.com. I'm Grant Davis. Thanks for listening. <laughs>